Hi, this is Tinuja from Vegan Lovely. Welcome once again to my channel. So this week we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day a little bit around the world. And so I wanted to share with you an Irish recipe, which is the tea loaf. It's a fruit tea loaf, which is also known as um, a balm brack or um, a tea brack. So it's a very popular fruit loaf that I used to enjoy um, eating when I was in Ireland. I sometimes used to buy this loaf in the stores in, when I was in Ireland. There was um, Tesco who used to carry a brand that, was, uh, that made it vegan and that's how I discovered this tea loaf. All the richness of this tea loaf comes from the dried fruits that are soaked in cold black tea overnight in the fridge. So the night before I brewed some strong black tea in a mason jar and left it to cool. I then went on and chopped the dried fruits because I had some chunky ones. You can use any dried fruits that you like. For my loaf, I added a little bit of a tropical twist and used papaya, mango, some candied ginger and raisins. Once the tea has cooled, I added in all the dried fruits and closed the jar. Then I placed it in the fridge and left it to sit there overnight to allow the fruits to soak up all the goodness. Now the next day we can make our tea loaf. Begin by preheating the oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. As an egg replacer, I am using half of a fully ripe banana. Mash the banana until there are no chunks left. In a mixing bowl, add the flour and a pinch of salt. Then add the baking powder. For spices, I am using a mix of cinnamon, cardamom and paprika or you can just use half teaspoon of ready-made mixed spice. Finally, add the sugar. You can also use dark muscovado sugar for a richer flavour and colour. Now mix all the dry ingredients together. Break the sugar lumps if there are any. Once everything is well mixed, make a well in the center and we are going to start adding the wet ingredients. First add the mashed banana. Then pour in the non-dairy milk. I used oat milk. Now add the tea. I'm only adding the liquid at this stage, so you may use a strainer to prevent the fruits from falling in. Once all the liquid are in, mix gently with a wooden spoon until you obtain a smooth batter. Now it's time to add in all the fruits and fold them into the batter.
pour the butter in a loaf tin lined with parchment paper. It's a good idea to also grease the tin with a little oil so that the paper can stick to it. So this will stop it from moving around while you're pouring the batter in the pan. Spread the batter evenly and level it in the pan and we are ready to place it in the oven. Make sure that your oven is heated at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I find an oven thermometer very helpful for this rather than relying only on the temperature knob. For me this loaf took 50 minutes to bake. Depending on ovens, it may take more or less time. So test with a skewer by inserting it into the loaf. If it comes out clean, the loaf is ready. Bear in mind though that this is a moist loaf with all the fruits that are in there. So you may not see a super dry skewer coming out, but as long as it's not coated with bits of sticky butter, it should be fine. This loaf is best eaten after two days to allow the flavors to develop and kept in an airtight container during that time. But if you're like me and cannot wait that long, at least allow it to cool completely first before cutting it. <laughs> mm. This is really delicious. The fruits are really moist and the sugar and the spices, they, they kind of bring that molasses flavor. It's really nice. It brings back a lot of memories of Ireland when I used to buy this cake. So I hope you give this recipe a try and let me know if you like it. Leave, it, leave me a comment. You can also hashtag me on Instagram if you ever make it. You can send me a photo. Don't forget to subscribe and I wish you all a happy St. Patrick's Day. Bye!